Hey friends, welcome to End Time Talks. I'm Joel Richardson. Together, Dalton Thomas and I are tag teaming, each doing five to 15 minute segments on the issue of the end times, current events, the interrelationship between those two things and what the Bible has to say about these matters. Now, if you're looking for more than just bite-sized segments, then do be sure to download the Frontier Alliance International app. This is an app that is chock full of excellent, relevant content. Everything from music to music videos to full length feature films to studies through different books of the Bible. We've got an end time study on Daniel and Revelation articles, all kinds of relevant updates and information. Okay, it is available for free on every major app platform. So download the app, Frontier Alliance International. You will absolutely be very happy that you did. So God bless and Maranatha. Hey friends, welcome back to the next installment of End Time Talks. Now in several previous discussions, um, I have laid out the case that Ezekiel 38 and 39, the prophecy, the oracle concerning Gog and Magog, this great battle, this great invasion of Israel in the last days, I've argued for the fact that this is not talking about a Russian-led invasion of Israel. Rather, it's talking about a Turkish-led invasion of Israel. And rather than being a preliminary end-time bad guy, distinct from, different from the Antichrist, rather, Ezekiel is simply telling the same story that Zechariah and Joel and all of the other prophets are talking about, and that Gog is simply another title or name for the Antichrist that Gog and his hordes is a reference to the Antichrist and his armies that will invade Israel in the last days. Now, because Russia has just recently invaded Ukraine at the time of this recording, this is an incredibly relevant text that we need to uh, analyze in a very careful manner. And of course, the prophecy sphere, the prophecy world is a flutter with all sorts of discussions concerning Russia's invasion of the Ukraine, this is Gog Magog, this is the battle of Gog Magog, this is the beginning, this type of thing. Now, one of the sort of main arguments that's often used to try to say, no, there's no way that this guy's the Antichrist. Gog clearly is destroyed long before the return of Jesus. You'll hear this said and taught by various voices is they'll say, well, look, when Gog and his armies are destroyed, it says that the inhabitants of Israel will burn the weapons They'll burn the weapons for seven years in the land, and they'll use it for fuel. And so people say, well, that's impossible because during the millennium, when Jesus is ruling and reigning on the throne, they're not going to have any need to burn for fuel or this type of thing. They, they, this clearly has to be something that takes place long before the return of Jesus because that, the millennium is not like that. They're not going to need fuel. And so essentially the argument is that during the millennium, the people that live in the land of Israel, they're just going to heat their homes and cook their food by magic. That's sort of the idea that's communicated, like the normal processes of life, such as needing fuel, uh, fuel to cook food and this type of thing, it won't be needed. But the bottom line is the scriptures actually tell a very, very different story. So first let me just begin by saying this, that what Ezekiel says when he says they will convert these weapons of war and utilize them for domestic purposes, for fuel, to cook food, and for heat, and this type of thing, that statement is really no different at all, no different at all than what we see, for example, in Isaiah chapter 2. It's also reflected in the prophecy of Micah, and that's this. And this is sort of one of the most well-known statements concerning the millennial reign of Jesus, concerning the millennium. So Isaiah chapter 2, verse 4, it says, He will judge between many nations. And he will render decisions for many peoples, and they will hammer their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not lift up sword against nation, neither will again they learn war. So here you have a very simple statement. During the millennium, now this is a very poetic statement. Yes, it's literal, but it's not like, well, they're only going to convert their swords into plowshares and nothing else, like knives or swords, anything. No, look, it's making a general statement. During the millennial reign, there will be no war. The peacemaker, the prince of peace, will be reigning on the throne, and they will actually convert their former objects of war into objects of agriculture, 
War will be a thing of the past. Agriculture will be the state and the condition of the world. It will be an agrarian utopia, a garden paradise, okay? So that's all, the say, that's all that's being said in Isaiah, in Micah, and it's the exact same thing, guys, that's being said in Ezekiel. They will take weapons and burn them for seven years as fuel. They will take weapons of war and utilize them for domestic purposes, just like they will take swords and weapons of war and utilize them for agricultural purposes. It's basically saying the same thing. The idea that during the millennium Jesus returns with a magic wand and just everything is done magically and supernaturally as opposed to through the normal means, that's simply not biblical at all. Let's look at just a few statements. I mean, we could look at so many concerning the millennium, but it talks about events unfolding during the millennium in a very natural way, just like when Jesus came the first time. He was actually born. You know, I mean, he was born. He breastfed. He had his diapers changed. Like all of the very earthly realities, earthy realities, uh, that came with the incarnation. And the idea that when he comes a second time, suddenly all of the natural order is going to be put on pause and he's going to just do everything supernaturally. No, not at all. Things will continue in a very natural way. This is the pattern of how he's always done things. Isaiah 60, the Lord will arise over you. His glory will be seen upon you. The, gentle, the, <clears throat> the Gentiles will come to your light, kings to the brightness of your rising. It's talking about the millennium. Lift up your eyes round about and see. They gather together. It's describing the Gentile kings of the earth making procession up to Jerusalem and bringing resources, bringing treasures to beautify the temple of God. That's what it's describing. And then it says this, foreigners will rebuild your walls and kings will serve you and they shall call you the city of the Lord, of Yahweh, Zion, of the Holy One of Israel. So it says during the millennium, foreigners will help Israel to rebuild the destruction that will come at, at the end of the, um, the tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble. So it talks about rebuilding. Again, Jesus not, doesn't just wave his magic wand. He comes back with a sword and he crushes his enemies. He stomps his enemies like grapes in the wine press. He doesn't come back with a magic wand. He comes back with a sword and a king's scepter, an iron rod with which he will strike down the nations. And it says they will rebuild the, the ruins of Israel, right? Numerous places. Isaiah 61, verse 4, they will rebuild the ancient ruins. They will raise up the former devastations. They will repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. We could go on and on, right? The millennium is a time when things will be rebuilt, but it's going to take time. And I would say it's probably going to take more than seven years to rebuild the earth at the end of the tribulation. But we have a thousand years to do that under the leadership of Jesus. So just going back to the original argument, the idea that simply because Ezekiel says that after Gog and his hordes are destroyed, they'll burn the weapons for seven years, that somehow precludes or eliminates this as referring to the age of the millennium, it's simply unbiblical. It's completely unbiblical. It, it is an argument that doesn't take into consideration the actual nature of the millennial reign of Christ. And so hopefully this helps you all to look at the prophecy of Ezekiel 38, 39 with a more balanced perspective, a more uh, less sensational perspective. Yes, look, prophecy is being fulfilled, but what is happening right now with Russia and Ukraine is not the fulfillment or even the beginning of the fulfillment of Ezekiel 38, 39. So I hope that was helpful. hope it was edifying. Again, be Bereans. Check these things out yourself. Uh, look forward to the next discussion. Until then, God bless and Maranatha. Thank you for watching this session of End Time Talks. Frontier Alliance International, as an organization and a spiritual family, we're focused on laying foundations and making disciples where there are none in the Middle East, specifically in the Muslim world. I want to ask you to consider supporting FAI at just $5 a month. $5 a month is going to go into a pool of a global family of people that are giving $5 a month that goes into the hands of labor serving on the front lines in the most difficult, challenging places in the world today, laying foundations where there are none and making disciples where there are none. Again, thank you guys for watching and thank you for supporting FAI.